Ladies and gentlemen, we will begin this event with a silent prayer. Let us remain standing for the silent prayer and the lighting of the lamp, which will follow. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Now, to light the traditional oil lamp, I kindly invite Professor S. Sri Satnaraja, the Vice Chancellor, University of Jaffna. Thank you, sir. Next, I cordially invite Professor R. Surendra Kumaran, Dean, Faculty of Medicine. Thank you, sir. Next, I invite Professor Ms. V. Arasaratnam, Head of the Department of Biochemistry. Thank you, madam. Next, I cordially invite the orator, Professor Ariyanani Nyanadasan, Senior Professor in Medicine, Department of Clinical Medicine, University of Colombo. Thank you, madam. Next, on behalf of the family members of Professor Balakumar, I kindly invite Mrs. V. Amit Gauri. Thank you, madam. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Let us please be seated. And I warmly invite the Vice Chancellor, Professor Sri Sagna Raja, um, Professor R. Surendra Kumar, Dean, Faculty of Medicine, the orator for the evening, Professor Arya Rani Nyanadasan, and Mr. S. Sivakumar, just take your places on the stage, please. Thank you. We are gathered here today to honor and cherish Professor Chandra Saharam Pillai Balakumar. Bala, sir, a multifaceted academic who we all are privileged to have known. He has contributed immensely to the University of Jaffna as well as the community at large as a teacher, a researcher, an administrator, and a strong pillar of support for the students. Beyond his role as a wonderful academic, Bala, sir, was also a lover of sports and an avid admirer of culture as was obvious to all who knew him. Being here today, hosting this memorial lecture in Balasa's name, I can envision him with his face lit up with that characteristic smile of his and showering his blessings on all of us here today. It would be remiss of me if I do not add that I hope Balasa's stellar qualities remain an inspiration to all of us, especially the past and present students. With this note, I invite the Vice Chancellor, Professor Sri Sakna Raja, to introduce the orator. Thank you. Thank you, Timber. Hello, Lakamu Malani. நல்லாரை நன்மை அறிவாய் நீ நானை சுடர் விளக்காய் நின்ற நீ பொல்லா வினைகள் அறுப்பாய் நீ புகழ்ச்சேவடி எம்மையில் வைத்தாய் நீ செல்வாய செல்வன் தருவாய் நீ திருவையாறகளாக சம்பத் சோதி நீ எங்களுடைய ரம்யமான நவண்டில் கிராமத்தில் உதித்த செம்பத் சோதி தான் 
Sandil Suram Pillai Balakumar. The first of all, I want to say something from my childhood. In the time of the world, I will give a formal introduction to the speaker. So, the world is the world of the world. So, the world is the world of the world. So, the world is the world of the world. There are six things that we have to do. One is Lachana. Urdi orang orang lain yang agi, orang Oli Wisum muat tuade, bala orang orang agal pun terasa. Inon dulu sahul bahagiam, jangan iri ke ke mai rambonda, narendal mai rambonda. Ini orang orang speaker, Arya Rani Madam Constantine, Nana Dasan orang Christian by her practicing faith. Jadi dan engkau Easter Sunday, abang Jesus ini ada famous parable, ini sahul baik kita kandi cerai. The seed fall into the fertile land, the seed fall into the barren land, the seed fall in the rock land. Balok mana rujuk itu, mewu muru unna zaman family le. Sandra Seram beli ini perempuan lelaki mandu orang, nangal, pergi ke pada sahle gile ya mai ter, tamu darah wittya sahle, ponnam mala wittya sahle, ahli anggal, anggal keramat itu perih perih serap gile ced ter, muda lawat MP, tamu le MP Ramalingam, anggal dia orang mana, utto orang mana, anggal dia faculty le, irindem, Dr Ramras, pediatrician, pioneering staff, anggal dia wife. Mrs. Pediatrician, Pharmacology Pioneering Staff, all of the neighbors. I think some of you will remember. So, I was able to get my affluence. Rich, rich and mad men, while Kulangara, while Pradish still pranth was in there. In Angala, Munda Asalan Krishna told me, I was able to get my life. Lachinam, Saubakyam. Metal third is the third. Arivu. And the Arivu third is the third. The third is the third. Now, there is a policy. Now, we have a recommendation. The nearest education center is the best center. We can't go to the hardly place. In Thamavar Avithya Sala, Udupiti American Mission, Nellidi Matyama Avithya Sala. In our family ki support pernah berdiri ni dah. Muka pelai, apri wan dah. Pray PhD, upsala Sweden mereka condition ni tu. Engkau dia yaal pelal kala ni ni de. Arab ane pelai, ayat itu ayat di ambala mande, mana mana bandu bodu. Engkau dia pelal kala um, dua beri ni dah. Nerus sejir ni tu. Kalau betul ayat mande, wala kama ayat ni dah. Engkau dia pelal kala um, ayam bum, kalau betul tu. Jadi pelajar lekang mari, ini betul le, engkau ni balau mera era mana itu korang dah, antri lehiran de, engkau dia kadesi payanam mera, ini pelajar lekang ni annye serapi itu korang dah, ada satu perih unna de purusa, abang dia presence apa umi lek, abang dia perwenjat leh, satu rendera kalandar me, itu presence, illa ada umi lek, universal, ini lek kira iri kiri lehiran de. Apa road apa ni? Ia tidak ada ikhlas bahagian itu. Ia adalah kehidupan yang sangat berjuta. Kita tidak ada ikhlas ini. Kita tidak ada ikhlas itu. 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 Kita tidak ada ikhlas Anda bala, ayer dia Godfather ayam de, Masters, MPhil, PhD beri ada titisan de. Adi beri le le ayer orang orang ni inda badan Madam Vasanthi, ayer dia family member mahu dia iran de. Inda pel inda pel le kalam pora tak kalat le, thala ni min dirik le, ke periyatya anggalat cahid, wadat terdetar. 
அது ஒரு பயோ கெமிஸ்ட்ரி ஒரு யூனிக் சென்டராக வந்தது இந்த இலங்கையிலேயே ஒரு மாடல் மேபி அ டஃப் மாடல் குட் மாடல் ரிசர்ச் மாடல் இட்ஸ் எ வெரி டிஃப்ரெண்ட் மாடல் யூனிக் எங்களுடைய பாலாவின் சயின்ஸ் ஃபேக்கல்ட்டியில் கோட் ஃபாதர் பாலாவின் சயின்ஸ் ஃபேக்கல்ட்டியில் உருவானவர் எங்களுடைய பாலகுமாரம் சயின்ஸ் ஃபேக்கல்ட்டியில் உருவானவர்கள் உருவாகி மெடிக்கல் ஃபேக்கல்ட்டி வந்து பிறகு அந்த மெடிக்கல் ஃபேக்கல்ட்டி ஊடாக யாழ் பல்கலைக்கழகத்தின் ஒவ்வொரு அம்சங்கள்லேயும் தனி சிறப்பு செய்தவர்கள் அவருடைய தாக்கம் செலுத்தாத இடமே இல்லை இந்த பிளே கிரவுண்டாக இருக்கலாம் ஸ்போர்ட் அட்வைசரி கமிட்டியாக இருக்கலாம் ஜேஎஸ்ஏயாக இருக்கலாம் ஜூஸ் கான்ஃபரன்ஸாக இருக்கலாம் ஐஆர்க்கு ப்ரொக்யூமெண்டாக இருக்கலாம் இன்றைய மாணவர்கள் ஏறி போகிற பஸ் அதேவர் பொக்கியவன்றகத்தினதுமான ஸ்பெசிஃபிகேஷன் எங்களுக்கு அந்த நேரம் ஹி வாஸ் வெரி கன்சர்வேட்டிவ் in some sense and a very modern man ellathayum technology ode inge nadanda exhibition medical faculty le meyon sirappu cheyda exhibition le oru periyoru contributor ayirundar avara and digitize panna and the exhibition i remember abadi ovvoru tholinutpathile irundhu avar dean aayirukke in the schedule prepare panna irundhu kananiyil le thannudaiya அறிவை மேம்படுத்துறதுல இருந்து மேம்படுத்தணும்னு சொல்லும்போது ஸ்டேட் ஆஃப் ஆர்ட் டெக்னாலஜி அவர் எல்லாரும் விரும்புவேன் ஸோ அப்படியான ஒரு பேர் திடீரென்று எங்களை விட்டு மறைந்த போதும் குலன பிள்ளையாரில் அவர் திருவடி சேர்ந்தார் திருவடி செய்கிற மாதிரி இருந்து அந்த குலன பிள்ளையார் சோகுமார் இருக்கிறார் அவருடைய வழிகாட்டிலேயே அவர் ஒரு இன்ஜினியராக வந்தார் அவரும் நியரஸ்ட் ஸ்கூல் பெஸ்ட் ஸ்கூல் ஒன்று அம்சத்தின்படி பொன்னம்பல வித்தியாலயம் நெல்லியடி மத்தியமான வித்தியாலயம் சரியாக நினைக்கிறேன் அப்படியே போய் என்னை சிட்னியில் ஒரு நல்ல இன்ஜினியராக இருக்கிறார் அவர் ஒரு விளையாட்டு வீரர் நீங்கள் நம்ப மாட்டீங்கள் எங்களோட விளையாடுவார் விளையாட்டு பிரியர் ஒரு ரசிகர் கலை ஆர்வம் உள்ளவர் எல்லா விதமான நவீன தொழில்நுட்பங்களையும் மிகவும் உன்னதமான வேகத்தில் அறிந்து கொள்ளவர் எங்களுக்கு எப்போ ஒரு டுவெண்ட்டி இயர்ஸ் தெரியும் ஒரு ஸ்டேட் ஆஃப் டெக்னாலஜி வந்து எங்களை ரீச் பண்ணுறார் அவர் டுவெண்ட்டி டேஸ் தான் செல்லும் அப்படியாக வாழ்ந்தவர் அதை விட ஒரு ஆட்டோமொபைல் பிரியர் எல்லா விதமான வாகனங்களையும் விரும்பி அதை அப்டேட் பண்ணுவர் அப்படியான ஒரு தட்ட நினைவில் நாங்கள் சங்கமிக்கின்றோம் இது நினைவு என்று சொல்வதை விட அவற்றை ப்ரெசன்ஸ் எல்லா இடமும் இருக்குது ஆனால் அவரை நாங்கள் பௌதிய ரீதியாக பிரிந்திருக்கிறோம் பிரிந்தாலும் அவருடைய யூனிவர்சல் எனர்ஜி அவருடைய அந்த ஸ்பிரிட் எங்களை தொடர்ந்து வழிநடத்தும் அவருடைய வாழ்க்கையில் மிகவும் உன்னதமான பங்கை வாய்த்த அவருடைய குடும்பத்தார் இன்றைக்கு இங்கே கலந்து கொள்கிறார்கள் அவற்றை உற்றார் உறவினர் இங்கே வந்திருக்கிறார்கள் அதை விட இங்கே மேடம் தனியாக விட்னஸ் பண்ணி கொண்டிருக்கிறார் அவருடைய மென்டர் அவர் இன்னும் பிரியாத ஒரு அவருடைய பயோ கெமிஸ்ட்ரி குடும்பம் இங்கே இருக்கின்றது அவருடைய மருத்துவ பீட குடும்பம் இங்கே இருக்கின்றது அதை விட அரியராணி மேடம் ஏற்கனவே பாலாவால் எங்களுக்கு அறிமுகப்படுத்தப்பட்டவர் ப்ரொஃபஸர் பாலசுப்ரமணியம் கோல்டு மெடல் அவருக்கு நாங்கள் அவார்ட் பண்ணுறாக்க மேடம் இங்கே வந்து அதை பெற்றுக்கொண்டா அப்போதும் அவ இந்த சினேக்ஸ் சீரம் ப்ரிப்ரேஷன் பற்றி ஒரு லெக்சர் எடுத்தேன் எனக்கு இப்போ நான் எத்தனை இடத்துல அந்த பேச்சுகளை நான் கோட் பண்ணுவேன் எப்படி அந்த எங்களுடைய லோக்கல் வடிகால் இண்டிஜினியஸ் கேரக்டரிஸ்டிக்ஸை நாங்கள் எங்களுடைய மெடிசனில் அசோசியேட் பண்ணாட்டி இட் மீ நோட் ஒர்க் எனக்கு ஸ்டில் ஐ ரிமெம்பர் மேடம் when you are talking in the jsa you are telling importing serum may not work with our snake because it may have a different uh, kind of characteristics avan the taxonomy in cheyidli and she was famous for grazing cobra at that time she was telling she was even bitten by that so uh, balas association with uh, our uh, nanadasan is sitting in the in front today he is closely associated with our law faculty and he has been mobilizing so many books for donation for our guiding in the initial stage of our law faculty now he is still contributing and also he is from our heart lead so from point peter and my school so this udavala karner ariyarani and tenmarachi madam and navandil balakumar our villages from jaffna how within a 50 60 years contributed to the development of this educational realm 
uh, fraternity of this peninsula into the international level. And that is a marvelous thing. So with this, I really want to go into the formal little bit of reading of uh, presenting what I supposed to say because it goes into the recording, then it will be a guide for so many future generation. Sauvakyam, Lachanam, Arivu, Kirti. Mathiramuran sir regret how say I go for it. So he's a peninsula, all over the area, Kirti man. So Balomar is known for everybody in our areas and he works in the industry, uh, our provincial uh, government and also in the national level. Puhal, Kirti, fame. And Viram, Balakumar, Foraptu Gwanda, Langal Elleram, Amatitam, Vasikonam. You know, he is fearless. And the Koyland Alanjari, Nadandulra, in the Sabailum, he is a fearless. Viram, sir, in the one. Other Vida, and near the Nadilla, and near the Nadagam, Ramana Mars, your definition, you will wear Vairakim, and near the Nadamal Vandavan, the Vida facilities will be. So in the Ara Ramsangalan, Sarapa, Amea Pet or Mahanode, Nan Aravada Halam Valnad or Narevu. Now, as the Vice Chancellor, I present my little bit of reading, so sorry. So we are very proudly claimed that Balakumar was the complete academic product of the University of Jaffna. His association with the University of Jaffna started in 1980 when he entered here as an undergraduate student in the Faculty of Science. From that time onwards, his affiliation with University of Jaffna has become an inseparable bond. After acquiring his bachelor's degree, he disseminated his knowledge in various capacities in the Jaffna Peninsula. He obtained his postgraduate master's and doctoral degrees at the Department of Biochemistry of the Faculty of Medicine under the able guidance of late Professor Godfather, Professor Balasubramaniam. Then he joined the University of Jaffna in 2001 on the permanent basis as a senior lecturer after having tenure with the various consultancy services of the provincial government. Professor Balakumar, because of the unique qualities and exceptional abilities which he acquired from his family, was able to fulfill his triple dimension of dissemination of knowledge, research, and academic administration with high quality accreditation and efficiency. He was able to inscribe within a short time his originality in the annals of history of the Faculty of Medicine and the University of Jaffna. Besides shouldering many other responsibilities for the betterment of the university community, he proved himself as a dedicated teacher, ardent researcher, and efficient administrator, and intimate mentor for the students and members of the staff. In 2019, he went to the University of Uppsala, Sweden, under the scholarship and research like created the Faculty of Medicine University of Jaffna to further his research in biochemistry and returned with a lot of innovation and academic advancement. He was a consultant in the distillery of the local products. Together with the Guru Balasubramaniam, he researched to improve the fermentation capacity of the Falmira sap to produce natural product of it. Professor Balakumar, as a biochemist, had all mysterious characteristics and man of emancipation, lively, pleasant, and aesthetic and creative characteristics. Balakumar was serving in the university community in all affairs of procurement during the last two decades. He was not only a procurement specialist of the University of Jaffna, he was a procurement specialist of the whole country. The government of Sri Lanka acknowledged his procurement capacities of the successful completion of the IRQ project and the procurement specialist Premiras have always quoted Balakumar as the best procurement specialist in the IRP circle. So Balakumar was a religious person. He had a natural inclination for his spiritual church and following the inner thirst of the soul. His clan in Navandil is very much involved with the temple activities and administration. Besides his academic involvement, he was an ardent promoter of his religious and work to preserve his religious tradition that were passed on by generation. This is proved very clearly by the fact that his human life in this world 
came to the completion in the temple of his own village, O Istadeva. Professor Balakumar fondly remembered not only for the University of Jaffna, but the entire academic community of the North, of which he served as a lighthouse, showing his correct direction in the gloomy nights. Faculty of Medicine suddenly lost an excellent academic while on service. His dedication and commitment to his service to the Faculty of Medicine is ever remembered by the University of Jaffna. Today, so we are glad to inaugurate or conduct the first year commemoration of his memory. Although his presence is felt every day in everyday affairs of our academic activities. Today's speaker, Professor Ariyarani Nyanadasan, is a senior professor in medicine at the Department of Clinical Medicine, University of Colombo, as a consultant physician and a consultant physician. She earned a Bachelor of Medicine and Bachelor of Surgery MBBS degree in 1985 from University of Peridania and Doctor of Medicine MD from University of Colombo in 1992, and a Master of Philosophy in 2004. She has authored more than 100 research papers in reputed journals, book chapters, and conference papers in her field. I really, in the CV, she blocked into the citations. I counted it. Citation goes into thousands. So I just counted it. She has more than 100 index papers. She is a member of the Royal College of Physicians, Federation of College of Physicians, United Kingdom as well. She also followed up the same institution from 19, uh, 2007, from MRCP. She was awarded Emily Vikram Nayaka Memorial Prize for Biochemistry. Come on, it's again biochemistry from our undergraduate period. And a scholarship for best performance in the second MBBS examination in 1981. Senaga Bibli Memorial Prize for Pharmacology in 1983. So he's a very distinguished, she's a very distinguished student in their career. More than that, she was awarded Dr. John Strokes Gold Medal for MD Medicine. So enviable record in the undergrad as well as in the postgrad, Ariarani Madam. So we are very privileged to have you today. And also she got Vijayarama Prize for Best Presentation, Renal Involvement in Snake Bite at the Young Physician Forum. It was held in Colombo. She also awarded President Research Bonus Award for Excellence in Research in many years, 1993 to towards 2000, and President Award for Research in 2001 and many other awards. With the undergraduate teaching, she served as an external examiner, chairperson of course modules, postgraduate training, examination of postgraduate degree program, diploma courses. So she has been contributing a medical education immensely. Unbelievable. I really checked in the CV and we display that one in our website for this uh, commemoration uh, document. So I thank Professor Ariyarani Nanadasan for accepting our invitation and delivering the Professor Balakumar commemoration uh, memorial lecture of this first year, Madam. The title, Venom and the Hiddi Diseases. So the University of Jaffna wishes to extend its gratitude to the staff of the Department of Biochemistry and family members of the Balakumar for arranging this memorial oration. Once again, I thank Professor Arirani Nanadasan for accepting our invitation and uh, our Mr. Nanadasan also accompanying her and her friends for making this uh, commemoration as a very memorable one. Thank you, Madam. It's over to you. Thank you so much, sir, for introducing the orator today and for attuning, attuning us all here to Balakumar sir's presence. And now I invite uh, Professor Ariyarani Nanadasan, Senior Professor in Medicine, Department of Clinical Medicine, University of Colombo, to deliver the memorial address. Good 
Good afternoon, Vice Chancellor Sir, Professor Sri Satkunaraja, Dean Professor Surendra Kumar, Senior Professor Vasandi Arasaratnam, Senior Professor of Biochemistry, and my beloved family members of late Professor S. Balakumar, academic and non-academic staff of the Department of uh, Biochemistry, Faculty of Medicine, and University of Colombo, Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. Vice Chancellor, sir, let me first thank you for your kind words of sentiments. I also thank late Professor Balakumar's family members and the Department of Biochemistry cordially inviting me to deliver Professor Balakumar's inaugural memorial lecture for the year 2023. Not only am I delighted to accept this invitation for this lecture, but I also consider it a great honor and privilege to deliver this inaugural memorial lecture in the name of our, one of our greatest scientists, great biochemist, prolific researcher, academic giant, a great teacher in medicine, and efficient administrator the country can boast of. Professor Balakuma was born on the 29th of July, 1965, and his primary education was at Karanavai Dharmoda, Dharma da, Dara Vidyalaya, and secondary education at Nelliadi Center, uh, Central College. He was selected to University of Jaffna for his bachelor's degree in biological sciences. After he completed his Bachelor of Science in Zoology, Balakumar went on to pursue a Master of Science in Biochemistry at the University of Jaffna, and he obtained his master's degree, and his thesis was entitled as Ambalite, immobilized amyloglycosidase for hydrolysis of starch and dextrinized starch. His supervisors were the giants, late Professor Bala Subramaniam and Professor Vasandi Arasaratna. Further, he upgraded his research degree, leading to PhD, on a title, Isolation and Improvement of Ethanol Producing Thermotolerance Saccharomyces cerevisiae, S1, and studies on osmothermo uh, thermo and ethanol tolerances. He joined the Department of Biochemistry Faculty of Medicine in, uh, as a senior lecturer in the year 2003, and he became the head of the department in 2005, and he had proven himself beyond doubt as an efficient administrator in that post until his demise. In 2012, he was unanimously elected as the Dean of the Faculty of Medicine. He, was, uh, he gradually progressed in his career and he was promoted to be the professor in the Department of Biochemistry in 2019 on merit basis. During his tenure as the Dean of the Faculty of Medicine, he contributed to the development of the faculty in an immense way. In particular, he not only completed the construction work of the Hoover Auditorium where you are, all of us are seated here now, which was incomplete for more than 25 years, but he also provided, not only that, he also provided with modern facilities for the students' use. He, was super, he has supervised undergraduate and postgraduate uh, students of his department as well as other departments of the University of Jaffna as well as other universities. And he was also obtained as well as he really secured the research funds from a number of institutions such as Fontera, National Research Council and National Research Sci National Science Foundation. Professor Balakuma was an excellent and prolific researcher, published more than 45 full papers 
in reputed national and international journals, as well as about, about 175 conference paper reports in the national and international fora. The research interest in his discipline were very diverse, including nutrition, metabolic syndrome, glycemic index, and enzyme activities, etc. Most of his publications were with the eminent researcher, senior professor Arasaratnam, who is in our midst today. To his credit, he has published a book titled as Insulin Resistance, and his H index were, is 13 at that moment. He, was, he had participated in several seminars international and workshops internationally as well as um, uh, nationally. And these research activities were nourished and nurtured by his deep knowledge and critical thinking. He served as a, as a reviewer to the Jaffna Universe Science Association and very many national and international journals. Furthermore, he obtained the presidential research, a prestigious presidential research award. He had a brilliant career and was an outstanding teacher and an excellent researcher whose genuine original scientific ideas were very much sought after. Professor Balakumar is a formidable personality and fulfilled his role as a leading academic researcher uh, researcher and uh, administrator and took on active role in religion, community, and national life. His contribution to the department, faculty, and university, and the community is difficult to be explained, and his loss is irreplaceable. I'm really, I feel confident that he had been alive, he would have really strongly supported my topic today, venoms and kidney diseases. As he is a researcher with diverse discipline, and especially his postgraduate research degrees were mainly on immobilization of enzyme activities, he would have really supported my lecture because I'll be dealing with those aspects in my lecture as well. So, ladies and gentlemen, my topic is venom kidney diseases. And I want to, from the outset, I want to stress that I will be using venom and toxin interchangeable words, interchangeably. So humans had really a long-standing interest in toxins, venoms found in the nature. Animal toxins and venom have caused a fascination of our ancestors from the dawn of humanity. humanity. Animal toxins are well recognized for their hazards to man due to the significant and unavoidable venomous animal and human interactions. Animal toxin envenomation is an important public health problem in the tropics, including Sri Lanka. Environmental toxins such as snake venom, bee, wasp venoms, and tropical infectious diseases such as malaria and leptospirosis are the important causes of acute kidney injury uh, in the tropics, including our country. Venoms are truly mortal cocktails of various toxins with mere purpose of evolution for survival of the organism it endogenously possesses. The venomous animals have venom for their predation, digestion, and defense. The, this slide shows the venomous arthropods insects. In a clinical epidemiological study which was done in 2010, in one of the hospitals in the northwestern province, they found in that particular year, there were 637 insect bites, venomous arthropod insect bites. Among them, the uh, honeybee was the predominant one. And honeybee, in Tamil, we call it teni. And in that family, we have not only honeybees, we have wasp, hornet, and yellow jackets. Those are the teni, kulavi, pondravehal. 
and we have uh, scorpions, we have spiders, and caterpillars, myrcoti. These are venomous insects which cause significant amount of morbidity and mortality in our hospitals, but we neglect those patients, and they can end up in fatality due to acute kidney injury. And this slide, you all must be knowing, these are the medically important snakes of Sri Lanka. The first one you know, cobra, and this is really endemic or special to the north, the dry zones of Sri Lanka, where I have also done some research, clinical epidemiological studies with my colleague who is here, Dr. Peranand Raja, saw scale viper bite, and there are two crates, common Indian one and the Sri Lankan one, and the uh, uh, the Russell's viper or Kannadi pudian, and the hump nose viper, which was initially thought non-venomous. Now, over the last 20 years or more, we have recognized that as a venomous snake. And we, the Sri Lanka being an island, it is surrounded by sea. So we have 15 species of sea snakes, and all of them are highly venomous, and they cause myotoxicity, toxic to the muscles, and they cause kidney injury. And this is the slide where the venom gland of a snake I have shown here to see it show you that venom gland secretes the venom or toxin which is injurious to various organs, including the kidneys. So when, so when someone is injected with toxin or venom, the venom circulated in the body and it affects almost, it imparts their effect almost every organ of the body. As you see here, the, uh, it can affect the brain, it can affect the vascular system, it can affect the heart, it can affect the kidneys, and it can affect the local tissues and neuromuscular junction, and it can cause its uh, lethal effects. So, and kidney being a highly vascularized and excretory organ, and which also receives 20 to 25 percent of the cardiac output, it is particularly vulnerable to toxin injury as an innocent bystander. And kidneys have a unique ability to concentrate the urine and can raise the toxin concentration in the tubular lumen and it causes toxic injury. And when it, when it affects the kidney, it, as you know from your science knowledge, you know kidney has glomerulus, proximal tubules, loop of Henle, distal tubules. So all the renal structures can be, can be affected by these toxins. So when you take animal toxins, they are not a single, single constituents. They are a complex mixture of proteins, peptides, enzymes, and other chemicals, including carbohydrate, lipid, etc., and the metals. So the animal toxins, especially the enzymes and the peptide components, which can cause cellular injury with a broad spectrum of clinical manifestation. And the renal manifestation occurs at the beginning as an acute in onset. They act through multifactorial mechanism and they cause toxin-mediated clinical syndrome, and which I will be dealing later. And the hemodynamic changes, it affects the hemodynamic, all, it causes hemodynamic alteration and it causes inflammatory and vasoactive mediators in the blood, as well as it also has a direct nephrotoxic effect, all these tightly integrated and they cause renal or kidney injury. And when we take toxin enzymes, which is the favorite uh, of our, our late Professor Balakumar, so toxin enzymes, especially proteases, phospholipase A2, metalloproteinases, and sphingomyelinases, uh, which are there in the toxin, are cytotoxic. They are toxic to the cell, cell membrane, and they are also potentially nephrotoxic. Toxin enzymes, especially proteases, phospholipase A2, they initiate inflammatory process and they generate pro-inflammatory cytokines and vasoactive mediators, which can result in systemic and renal hemodi hemodynamic alterations. And they also directly affect the red blood cells and the muscle cells, the myocytes, and they affect the clotting pathway and the vascular endothelium and epithelium of the body. 
and they, in turn, they result in intravascular coagulation, bleeding disorder, intravascular hemolysis, and rhabdomyolysis, that is, as a result of muscle damage, and which all, all enhances the renal ischemia, and they affect the renal blood flow, uh, and they cause renal injury. This is an important slide where I have put how the animal toxin can affect the kidney and cause kidney injury, as well as a result of, the, as a result of kidney injury, how patient can present with clinical features. And when you do a renal biopsy, what are the pathological changes which can occur? So this is a general slide which I have put. Due to the immunological reaction of the toxin, they can cause immune complexes which can go and deposit in the glomerulus and cause kidney injury. And they can cause anaphylaxis, and which in turn causes blood pressure changes and all hemodynamic changes. They, can, they also have toxic, toxin vasoactive substances they can affect the hemodynamic changes, and they also cause inflammatory reactions and cause vasoactive and pro-inflammatory cytokines, which can affect hemodynamic changes, as well as due to modulation of the ion channels in the vessels, as well as the autonomic nervous system, they can in turn affect hemodynamic changes. So as you see here, hemodynamic changes can occur due to various uh, mechanisms. As a result of hemodynamic changes, which can cause renal ischemia, there is less blood supply, so the glomerular filtration rate is also affected, reduced, and it can cause kidney injury. And not only that, they can also directly affect the red blood cells, myocytes, and they can affect the cells by, uh, by causing pore formation, producing holes in their me membrane, and because of that, they can cause rhabdomyolysis and uh, intravascular hemolysis, and they can cause uh, kidney injury. So when a patient gets kidney injury, they presented to us uh, to the hospital, to the clinicians with various manifestations. They can come with history of snake bite, followed by blood, uh, passing blood in the urine, or hemoglobin, leakage of protein, and various things, and they can end up in acute renal failure, or now we call it acute kidney injury. And sometimes, if they do, sometimes we do pathological uh, assessment or pathological examination by doing a kidney biopsy, and we could see all these glomerular nephritis and toxic tubular necrosis, etc. So this is the this is in a nutshell the how animal toxin can affect the kidney and cause problem to the human beings. So now. I will be, next few minutes, I'll be concentrating on this neglected thing, neglected uh, problem but due to arthropod venomous animals. And I have taken bees. I will show you why, what is the reason. The bees, wasps, and hornets, and yellow jackets, they belong to an order. You know, you would have studied in zoology, botany, the family order and all. It belongs to the family uh, order called Hymop uh, Hy Hymenoptera. So these Hymenoptera toxins, again, they are complex mixtures of peptides, protein, enzymes, and chemicals, which, are the, which cause cellular injury due to several mechanisms. And the enzymes which are important are the histamine, 5-hydroxytryptamine, phospholipase A2, alpha d glucosidase and they, cause, they also have kinins and peptides. And especially, I want to say, toxic surface active polypeptide peptides. And in that, this order, this, uh, this group of uh, arthropods have two important peptides, polypeptides. One is apamine. This is a neurotoxin, and the other one is the melitine. The melitine is the one which enhances the injurious effect of the notorious phospholipase A2. You all would have studied in your biochemistry everywhere in medicine. If you don't know phospholipase A2, then you don't know medicine at all. So it enhances the injurious effect of phospholipase A2, and it inhibits the uptake of sodium phosphate as well as the other polypeptide, the enzyme called alpha-D glucosidase, which increase the calcium uptake in the proximal renal tubule. Not only that, melitine also 
Along with the phospholipase, it affects the striated muscles and causes muscle damage, which is in medical terminology, we call it rhabdomyolysis, and they also affect the red blood cells and cause hemolysis. So the myoglobin, which is released into the blood circulation, which is really toxic to the acute kidney tubules, and it causes acute kidney injury, and these pigments goes and uh, deposited in the intralobules and tubules, and it can cause pigment nephropathy. So in the Hymenoptera order, the vast hornet and bee venom induced kidney, uh, acute kidney injuries are really a fatal complication that can follow because you know, you also may have, one of you may have been stung by uh, bee or wasp in your lifetime. And if it is a single sting, or a few sting, then it will not cause these sort of life-threatening complication, fatal complication. But it always, these fatal complications like acute kidney injury following the uh, sting, stings happen, if it is a mass attack or multiple stings can cause this problem. Remember that. So single ones or few things can cause only anaphylaxis or hypersensitivity reaction. If it happens multiple things, then it can cause this problem. So this again depicted a diagram, a schematic diagram where when a bee stings you, the bee venom gets into the bloodstream and it goes and affects the skeletal muscle and causes rhabdomyolysis, which is toxic to the kidney and causes acute tubular necrosis and it can cause AKI, acute kidney injury, is well known to be abbreviated as AKI. And it can affect the blood cells and cause hemolysis and cause acute kidney injury. They, can, they also have nephrotoxic substances, so they directly affect the tubules and cause kidney injury, or the venom itself has vasoactive substances in the bloodstream, which causes systemic vasodilatation. So in, because of that, vascular permeability is increased, heart rate are decreased, and the renal perfusion decreased, and renal ischemia, which can result in acute kidney injury. So this wasp, hornet, and bee venom-related nephropathy, the pathogenesis of AKI mainly due to this muscle destruction causing pigment-related uh, uh, nephropathy. And they also can cause direct nephrotoxic effect and that can also in cause these problems. And they finally end up in acute kidney injury. And one of the things when patients come with acute kidney injury due to bee sting uh, or uh, wasp sting, the early treatment with aggressive hydration and alkalinization of the urine by using sodium bicarbonate and giving a dose of mannitol and all can prevent AKI if they are secondary to rhabdomyolysis or hemolysis. Remember, it has to be done when they are in early stage, not during the established acute kidney injury. Because if you give it in acute, established acute kidney injury, that will result in dangerous situation. So early treatment will prevent this. And this is a news, uh, news item which, was, uh, uh, which came in the Sunday Times of 2016. I don't know whether you could see 2016, July 17, it was flashed, say, saying that there was a tragedy in 2014 by uh, a carpenter bee being uh, st uh, sting a man, he has this, uh, this carpenter bee has stung a man, laborer, who was working in the northwestern province while he was clearing uh, land. He was, he was stung on his face and the head and he died. And they did the postmortem uh, and the Putlam DMO was uh, involved. And then two years later, they really, uh, they gave all the investigation and summary of the disease. So this was supposed to be a rare uh, bee, but it has caused fatal thing. So we need to remember that why I'm showing this. These are very important as far as the uh, public and the doctors and the healthcare team are concerned, but we don't really pay much attention. We don't do many research on uh, venomous arthropods, venom, insect venom. So I really wanted to stimulate the audience, the clinicians, the academics to pay uh, attention to these things in future. Uh, 
so there are a lot of case reports. If you go and search in the web, in Sri Lankan uh, setup, there are patients who have died due to pulmonary edema, acute kidney injury, following multiple boss bites. There are several, I have noted here, few of them. My colleagues and myself, we have published few. So that ends the venomous arthropod insects. Now, the latter part of my lecture will be on snake venom, which you all, all of you must be familiar with. As you know, again, snake venom is a mixture or cocktail of more than 100 different constituents. They have proteins, proteases, enzymes, polypeptides, non-protein things like carbohydrate, lipid, zinc, metals. And the enzymes are, as you know, they are the high molecular weight protein. They act on the coagulation pathway. They act on the metabolism and complements. And the important ones uh, you can't really avoid for solipase. It comes everywhere. Acetylcholinesterases, L-amino acid oxidases, hyaluronidases, and you have proteins like metalloproteinases and all, which are really important in the uh, coagulation pathway. So this is the same slide I'm showing you. Again, snake venom also, when a patient is in, in, uh, by, bitten by a snake, then the venom is injected. It can go and affect almost all the organs of the body, including the kidney. And the pathogenesis or pathophysiology, snake venom can cause direct effect, and it can affect the glomerulus and tubules, and it can cause through various these factors, uh, metabolic and vasoactive substances, including phospholipase A2. Remember, it can cause, it can affect the master endocrine gland or the hypothalamus pituitary axis, and it causes, it releases corticosteroid, ACTH, and vasopressin, and that in turn can stimulate the inflammatory process, and it can cause kidney injury. And the famous hemodynamic changes also can contribute to due to renal due, due, due to reduce renal blood flow and reduce GFR. It can cause kidney injury. And this shows the pathology. When you have these patients, and when you do the, uh, if you have to do a renal biopsy, these are the pathological kidney disease entities you see. You can see interstitial nephritis. You can see glomerular nephritis. It could be immune-mediated, antibular necrosis, and cortical necrosis. Remember, tubular necrosis and cortical necrosis, which I will be referring during the course of the rest of the lecture. And you might wonder whether all these medically important snakes, which I showed you earlier, whether all of them causes renal disease. The answer is no. Luckily, only few ones only causes kidney problem. They are, they belong to a family called Viperidae, and they are Viperidae, there are true vipers and pit vipers, and among the true vipers, Russus viper and the hump nose viper, they, are hemat they have hematotoxic venom or procoagulant venom. And the Elapidae family, they have a subfamily called Hydrophidae. In that Hydrophidae subfamily only, we have all the sea snakes. And the Jaffna Peninsula, also the sea has enough and more uh, sea snakes. And this is the Enhytrina cystosa. And uh, they can really, the, if you talk to the fishermen, they will be saying that very lightly they will say, Every day when we catch the, snake, uh, the fish, in the net we see one or two sea snakes and we just throw it by taking it from the tail and throw it out. Luckily, they have never beaten, but I have a patient from Modera Beach in Modera, Colombo 15, in 1990, a um, fisherman was, while throwing, he was bitten, and he went through all the, all the stormy episodes, and finally he recovered. And remember, we do not have antivenom for sea snake bite still in Sri Lanka, not even in India. Most of the countries, except Australia, we do not have antivenom for sea snakes. So the clinical manifestation, that is, when, you are, when patients are presented, the kidney manifestations are, they can present with passing blood with the urine. This is another patient, a uh, long time back in 1996 when I was doing my research. I had this patient from Anuradhapura Hospital. She is a 12-year-old girl, was bitten by the same snake which is here. 
four feet long rasa swiper, Kannadi Pudir, and she came to the hospital, and few hours later, she started passing this dark color or red color, almost blackish color urine, that is hematuria and hemoglobin urea. This is another patient during the course of uh, the stay, he started passing and throughout, and then finally it cleared with antivenom and on its own, and the patient recovered. And this is a patient who was bitten by a sea snake, and you could see this patient was, one eye is fully closed, that is complete ptosis, other one is partial ptosis, and he has myoglobin urea. This is the one which has shown in this test tube, and you can remember by doing a spectroscopic examination of the urine, you could see the myoglobin. Okay, so this myoglobin urea and is uh, from the sea snake bite because they are myotoxic snakes. So, uh, so they, ca they also can cause protein urea because this uh, venom can injure the tubules and they can leak out protein. Even it can be mild or it can be, uh, it can amount to one or more grams of protein per 24 hours, and which can cause really a nephrotic syndrome, which is a common problem in Myanmar, Burma, but not in Sri Lanka. But in Sri Lanka also, there are two cases of nephrotic syndrome following Russell swiper bite. And they also causes this life-threatening acute kidney injury. It could be they could pass less urine, or less than 400, then we call it oliguric acute kidney injury, or they can cause no urine, they don't pass urine at all, and the renal functions will be elevated, or there could be some patients will have normal, more or less normal amount of urine output, but their renal functions are going up and they are really in kidney injury. They also can present with nephritic and nephrotic syndrome, and they are mainly less frequent, and they are immune-mediated uh, pathology causes it. So, as I told you, acute kidney injury is a life-threatening one, which occurs with hematotoxic snakes such as Russell's viper and hump nose viper, and myotoxic snakes like sea snakes. And if you do a biopsy, or if the pathology is mainly acute tubular necrosis. The onset can be within few hours to three, four days, and they present, initial presentation is the upper back pain or loin tenderness, loin pain. And their blood pressures can really fluctuate. They can have hyper, transient hypertension. Children are more prone to get, uh, prone to develop acute kidney injury. And uh, this uh, acute kidney injury varies from species and depending on the severity of envenoming, it can cause. And the other thing is, this, uh, it causes significant snake venom also, or snake bite is also one of the causes of acute kidney injury, which contributes uh, a bigger percentage uh, as a cause. And as I told you, acute kidney injury has uh, due to various causes, and it is a multifactorial and complex mechanism which results in acute kidney injury. And recently we have uh, known a new uh, entity, or it is a new pathogenesis for acute kidney injury that is called uh, thrombotic microangiopathy. It was not only in Sri Lanka we recognized, and other countries like India, globally it has, been it has been reported, it's an important complication and clinical syndrome. So within a subset of uh, uh, patients, who are the people whom we get, especially if they are bitten by a procoagulant hematotoxic venom, which really results in venom-induced consumption coagulopathy, which is abbreviated as VICC, they can end up in acute kidney injury. And the snakes which can cause, not sea snakes, Russell's viper and hump nose viper. TMA is characterized by a triad. They cause anemia, that is a hemolytic anemia, and microangiopathic hemolytic anemia, and their platelet counts will be low, that is thrombocytopenia, and they also have microvascular thrombotic occlusion. In the blood vessels of the glomerulus and all, you could see small thrombi, and that causes ischemia, and it results in acute kidney injury. So when you take Russell's viper venom, hump nose viper venom, they have hemotoxic venom. 
And they, it can be, it can co affect the coagulation pathway by two ways. One is a pro-coagulant, where it is, the coagulation pathway is activated. Other one inhibits and causes anticoagulant uh, effect. So the procoagulant pathway, when it, is, when it is stimulated, it can end up in venom-induced consumption coagulopathy because they use clotting factors at various points of the clotting cascade, and they finally, they are depleted of clotting factors, and it can cause fatal hemorrhage and death. Not only that, they also cause TMA, and which results in this new entity called acute kidney injury. And for this new uh, entity or new sort of uh, pathogenesis, we do not, we have minimal treatment options. So as clinicians who are here, you, they will also testify with me that we do not have very many other than hemodialysis, we do not have many options and we sometimes, or we mostly uh, subject these patients to the, uh, a procedure called TPE. Okay, that is also plasma exchange with free, uh, frozen uh, plasma. So uh, this is the triad, and this is this uh, cystocytes, which is pe uh, peculiar to this uh, um, uh, microangiopathic hemolytic anemia with fragment cells and all. So what we did, one of my PhD uh, candidate, now he is a PhD holder, he is a nephrologist, who has done a study. Uh, we did a study with Sri Lankan Russus Viper and uh, Hump Nose Vipers, and we did a study in a national hospital as well as the closest hospital called Corona Hospital. We did a study and we found thrombotic uh, microangiopathy and acute kidney injury are associated. And we also did uh, another study and we found that acute kidney injury, uh, when it happens in the TM, with TMA, that is severe. So the, the, it has been published in the international journals. And the summary or the conclusion of those two studies, are dict here I have noted this, the TMA appears to be closely associated with the development of acute kidney injury, especially with most severe forms of acute kidney injury, and the patients really needs uh, renal replace, replacement therapy such as hemodialysis maybe for days or weeks, and thrombocytopenia is a predictor of AKI. If these patients have thrombocytopenia significant, more than 15% reduction from the baseline, then you are sure and you can anticipate your patient will get acute kidney injury. And if, if your patient does not have VICC, venom-induced consumption coagulopathy, it has a high, neg high negative predictive value that your patient will not develop AKI. And we have compared the patients who had therapeutic plasma exchange with patients who did not have. And we found that whether they have TPE or not, it has not showed any short or long-term outcome when you compare with the patients who didn't have. So it has no place in the treatment of a snake bite associated TMA, okay? And as I told you, this, uh, both snakes can cause uh, acute kidney injury, which will be severe and prolonged. And, um, and we also wanted to find a, find a renal function, which can predict. And we did that in that study, we also found if you do a serum creatinine concentration uh, at the four hours after the bite, four hour post, uh, post bite, which will be a early predictive of the development of acute kidney injury. So it is good to check the uh, serum creatinine at four hours after the bite, remember that. Then we also wanted to really find out uh, to uh, whether there are any early markers to, fa to, uh, to find out the, to predict the acute kidney injury. And from our study, we found serum cysteine C biomarker appears to be a better marker than the serum creatinine for early prediction of moderate to severe acute kidney injury following hump nose viper envenoming. So remember, we do not have these markers freely available in the state hospitals or 
in the even in the private hospital so the uh, the laboratories we have in the universities we need to think about start doing this and to make sure these facilities are available to available at the national level for low cost so the outcome of the acute kidney injury normally it is really good complete recovery occurs except if the pathology kidney biopsy shows uh, cortical necrosis the mortality can vary from 1% to 20% and the bad prognostic factors or ba bad outcome the factors which cause ba bad outcomes are elderly and the people who have cortical necrosis and severe hemorrhage and so also acute kidney injury can lead to in some people chronic kidney disease everybody all of us know about chronic kidney disease including our general public that is a major problem in sri lanka including northern province and so we have commonly it is due to non communicable diseases like diabetes hypertension and all and the toxins are also postulated to be a cause for the where the cause is not known that is called ckdu see chronic kidney disease of undetermined I mean origin. So we postulate snake bite also. He didn't really contribute to that, but we need to do proper studies and make sure that. So snake bite associated TMA, the severe ones can extend, uh, can go into chronic kidney disease so that what we need to know is regular follow up of all the patient who results in acute kidney injury for about a year is important and there's another colleagues of ours they have published a paper 37% of patients who develop acute kidney injury following snake bite leads to chronic kidney injury at the end of one year and this is one of my patient way back in 20 years back she is a teacher from panadura she was while traveling back from school was bitten by this particular snake which was shown here hump nose viper and presented with hematuria and she went into acute kidney injury and she was dialyzed she never recovered from acute kidney injury while in the ward after 6 uh, year 6 weeks uh, we really did a biopsy and we found and the biopsy report her uh, biopsy, biopsy report is shown here and that shows bilateral cortical necrosis and it was a sad story but it ended up in happy ending because one of the buddhist monk came forward to give kidney kid his kidneys to this lady so they went to Canada, india and got their kidney transplant done and she is still living her daughter is a consultant cardiologist now when the mother was a patient she was a medical student at sri javadnapura hospital university and the university students they raised the fund for her to go to india for the transplant okay so in conclusion uh, venom toxins are common causes of broad spectrum of kidney diseases, including acute kidney injury. Venom and toxins, as I told you, it can lead to CKD, especially CKDU, so that the, the regular follow-up is important. And the animal toxinology remains still a fascinating field that opens up for research in transport physiology. And animal toxins such as snake venom, still there are a lot to be done research-wise. And the venomous arthropod venoms are not touched yet. They are an important area for research in physiology, molecular biology and biochemistry, pharmacology, drug discovery, even for medicine clinicians, we can do a lot of research in that. So, with that, uh, uh, I, really, uh, I really think if Professor Balakumar was alive and if he was in, the, in, the, in this presentation, he would have been really, uh, really supporting and really interested in, the, in uh, hijacking or grabbing these research scientific ideas and stimulate the postgraduate students to do research on it and to do postgraduate degrees such as MPhil and PhDs. So thank you very much once again for your patient hearing, and I hope I have done justice to this great biochemist and a great researcher of this land. Thank you.
Thank you all. Next, I warmly invite Professor R. Surendra Kumaran, Dean, Faculty of Medicine, to address the gathering and deliver a brief note about the memorial publication, Beyond a Life, a compilation of articles, messages, and some treasured memories of Professor Balakumar. So, we are here today for the memorial the memorial lecture of professor late professor Sandra Sekharam Pillai Balakumar, the family and the department biochemistry organized the talk. So we got this uh, eminent researcher and senior professor, Ayarani Nyana Dasan, on the venom and the kidney disease. Uh, I think that uh, her talk really uh, devoted and to this uh, as he mentioned, uh, definitely that uh, Dr. Balakumar alive, so he would be very happy and on also will definitely uh, would have taken up and to some of these research project. So I am here to be uh, introduced. I don't want to be now. It's not a review, and I want to some uh, thoughts from me. Uh, the book uh, that will be. Uh, given to you as a kind of a first year memory of Professor Chandra Sekharampalli Balakumar. We all know he was a wonderful and uh, loving soul who we were blessed to have known. He loved his family, the faculty, the university, and the whole community we were shocked and sad when we heard that he was no more. Life can be fleeting, but life lived to the fullest stays in fond memories. This is particularly difficult and painful time for his family and the friends. So Professor Balakumar is a multifaceted and exceptionally academic, exceptional academic in the history of the Faculty of Medicine, Yunus Yafna. His life exemplary in many ways for others. His tracks will always be at the University of Yafna. His presence will remain in the Faculty of Medicine and the University of Yafna. So he was a brilliant and visionary leader who achieved recognition for his work in biochemistry. We will long remember Prof. Balakumar's energy, tenacity, and ability to leap tall hurdles. He always finds out the way to solve problems, was at the forefront of the implementing many projects and programs in the faculty and the university. His contribution to the institution is enormous. He shouldered many complex tasks during the critical period of the history of the Faculty of Medicine. Even though the death of Prof. Balakumar was sudden, his impact cannot be contained in his short lifetime. The book Beyond Life tells the journey of the great soul this is an excellent collection of stories backed by quotes from family members, friends, colleagues, well-wishers, and students. This book opens the door to life lived in the freedom of your innermost being. The book highlights the valuable life and service rendered by the great man. From Balakumar, a caring and beloved family man, cherished colleagues, scholar and friend will be missed by many, but never will be forgotten by those fortunate 
enough to have known to him. We will never forget his valuable contribution to the society. The book will also one of the remembrance. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Now I kindly invite Professor Ms. V. Arasaradnam and Mr. S. Sivakumar to hand over the book Beyond the Life to Professor Aryanani Yanadasan and Professor S. Sri Satnaraja. Thank you all. We are nearing the end of this memorial lecture. I now invite Ms. Tanuja Vidyanandan to deliver the vote of thanks. Vanakam, a very good evening, Vice Chancellor Prof. Sri Sad Gunaraja, Chief Guest Professor Ariyarani, Mr. Gnana Dasan, Dean Medicine Prof. Surendra Kumaran, Professor Vasanthi Arasaratnam, distinguished professors, lecturers, staff, doctors, students, and guests, ladies and gentlemen. We are honored to be here and honored by your presence to commemorate Professor Bala on his first year anniversary. Professor Bala was known as a brilliant researcher, scholar, and a leader in his academic career. But many of us will first think of his radiant smile and his deeply engaging personality. His gracious manner and warm humanity will be fondly remembered. With those memories and humbled by your presence today, on behalf of the family of late Professor Balakumar, I would like to extend our heartfelt gratitude. My name is Tanuja Vidyanandan, and I am a niece of late Professor Balakumar. I'd like to start by thanking the Vice Chancellor, Professor Sri Gunaraja, also a childhood friend of Professor Bala for the warm introduction of the orator and your support to make this a memorable event. We also appreciate your support to our family throughout this difficult year. Our sincere thanks to our chief guest and the orator, Professor Ariyarani Gnanad Dasan, for accepting the invitation without any hesitation and traveling from Colombo to deliver an enlightening memorial lecture today. We are honored to have you here today. Thank you, Professor Ariyarani, for making the lecture very informative and relevant also to non-clinical guests, not to mention a relevance between the topic and Professor Bala. Where Professor Bala was born and lost is also a hometown for some venomous snakes as we spotted a Russell's viper and cobra in the past weeks at his backyard. Thanks again, Madam. Our warm gratitude to the Dean Professor Surindra Kumaran for your kind no and release of the memorial publication beyond a life. Our warm gratitude also for your thoughtful support to us since the time of our loss. Professor Vasanthi Arasratnam, it is hard to express our gratitude with words. Thank you for being with us and for your guidance and support as always. Thank you, Madam, for organizing this event and the memorial publication. Thanks to the Dean's Office for the arrangements and formalities. Our sincere appreciation to staff members of the Department of Biochemistry for the detailed planning and execution. Our sincere thanks to the VC Media for covering the event online and the photography. Thank you. Beyond a Life, a memorial publication of Professor Bala is a precious compilation of articles, messages, and memories. Thank you for those warm memories and messages you shared as they truly reflect on how special and impactful his life was. Finally, and importantly, we extend our deepest sense of appreciation to our anchor, Ms. Bhavana Sivayogan. You have been fabulous with the lively proceedings today. We also like to take this opportunity to sincerely thank each one of you in presence here 
and also many who could not be here in person today for your friendship, support, and fascinating moments with Professor Bala during his long span of tenor at the University of Jaffna, making it his second home as we often feel and say. We will always be grateful with the therapeutic memories of the final procession and tributes offered to Professor Bala laid at this very auditorium on his last day a year ago. It showed us how rich he lived his life. A life lived rich is a life that deeply touched the lives of many. With the everlasting memories, thank you everyone and have a wonderful evening. Thank you, Ms. Danija. Ladies and gentlemen, that brings us to an end of this memorial lecture. Let us please rise as the procession leaves the hall.